Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I want to talk about two of my favorite value e-bikes, the Electric XP and the Rad Runner from Rad Power Bikes. Now I call these value bikes because in my opinion these are two of the best bang for your buck e-bikes, meaning you get a lot of features and quite good performance for an incredible price. So let's compare these two e-bikes because I think these are going to be the two that a lot of first time e-bike shoppers are going to be comparing. Now we'll start by looking at the price. Of course both of these bikes are going to see their prices fluctuate, but generally speaking the Electric XP is priced at $899 while the Rad Power Bikes Rad Runner is priced at $1199. So you've got a $300 price disparity. If you look at specs like performance and speed, you'll see that the specs actually overlap for these two bikes, which makes them very interesting to compare. Starting with Electric XP, the motor is rated at 500 watts, which is lower than the 750 watts of the Rad Runner. However, the Electric XP actually goes a bit faster. It's rated up to 28 miles per hour, as opposed to the 20 miles an hour on the Rad Runner over here. Now, in reality, I find that I get up to about 25 miles or so. Uh, 25 miles per hour that is on the electric xp i can get to 28 but i have to really spin those pedals hard and when i'm on throttle only riding i actually only get to 20 miles per hour which is what you'd find on an actual class 3 e-bike so while they say 28 miles per hour and it is true i can hit 28 you have to put in a lot of effort to get there so don't expect that you're going to be cruising around nice and easy at 28 miles per hour still though it is going to get you a faster speed than the rad runner However, the Rad Runner, I feel, has more power and gets up to speed quicker because it does have that higher power motor. When it comes to range, the Rad Runner has a larger capacity battery. We've got a 670 watt hour battery over here compared to a 500 watt hour battery over here. That means 48 volt 14 amp hour versus 48 volt 10 amp hour. That's about 40% more battery and theoretically 40% more range. However, it really depends on the speed you're going. If you're actually going a lot faster on the Electric XP, you'll find that the range is even lower, or if you're slowing down, you'll get higher range. The range varies, obviously, but I find that somewhere between 20 to 40 miles is reasonable range for both of these bikes, with the Rad Runner usually getting a bit more range, and it all depends how you ride it, if you're going faster or slower, if you're pedaling, that sort of thing. Next, let's look at components. In general, I find the Rad Runner has slightly nicer components. The brakes are a little bit nicer. The light is a little bit nicer. Uh, it has some accessories like this uh, cargo box up here. You've got the option for bench seats, uh, passenger pegs. Basically, everything's just a little bit nicer. When we look at the components over here on the Electric XP, it's all fine, but it's just uh, what, maybe one tier below when it comes to things like uh, brake levers, the derailleur, though we actually have a derailleur over here, we don't have gears. So that's another thing to consider is that we actually have a, I think it's a seven speed over here, uh, as opposed to a single speed with the Rad Runner. Now, in my experience, I find that I don't really shift gears on the Electric XP. I leave it in top gear all the time. Maybe if you're climbing huge hills, you'll shift it down, but with the motor, you don't really need to use the lower gear so much. So even though this is a single speed, I find that I basically treat this one as a single speed as well. One aspect of the components that I do like about the Electric XP over the Rad Runner is that you get things included, like these fenders, you don't have to pay extra for those. You actually have to pay extra for fenders on the Rad Runner. And of course, you do have the option of carrying a passenger over here on the Rad Runner, and while you could maybe figure out a way to do that on the Electric XP, it's not really set up for that. Now there is one big convenience advantage of the Electric XP, and that is that it's a folding e-bike. If you want to fit it in the trunk of a car, you can do that in almost any car because it folds fairly small. The Rad Runner, on the other hand, is not going to fit easily in a trunk just because it doesn't fold. I've put it in a minivan before. Uh, depending on the minivan, you might need to loosen these bolts up here and just kind of fold the handlebars down a bit. It's a little more annoying to transport in a typical car, but if you're not going to be transporting it, that's probably not an issue for you. In terms of ride comfort, I find both of the bikes to be fairly similar. Neither of these has suspension, as you can tell. Rigid fork, rigid tail, these are both uh, completely rigid frames, but they also both have fat tires. Now the tires are a little bit different. Rad uses these K-Rad tires that they've developed themselves with Kenda. The Electric XP uses the CSD tires. There's not a huge difference. Rad will probably tell you that these are higher quality. Maybe they are. 
To be honest, they both feel really good to me. I might feel a little bit more confident leaning into corners on these tires on the Rad Runner, but to be honest, these are so similar and you get a nice air cushion with both of these because they are fat tires. So both the bikes, despite being uh, non-suspension e-bikes, both of them have decent rides for what they are. Now, obviously, if you're gonna do some serious off-roading, these are not gonna be the most comfortable bikes. I've done some off-roading on the uh, Rad Runner and you basically have to stand on the pedals, come out of the seat because you're gonna be bouncing around and, and bucking because there's obviously no suspension on this very rigid frame. So in the end, which bike is best for you? Well, it totally depends on what you're looking for. Yes, the Rad Runner is $300 more expensive, but it has some features that you're not gonna get on the electric XP. It's got a bigger battery and you get the advantage of going with a bigger company. On the other hand, you can save money by going with electric XP. You can get a lot of the same performance as you'd get in the Rad Runner. You maybe won't get as much range, but you'll actually get a slightly higher top speed. So it really depends what you're looking for. In the end, they're both great bikes. I have had tons of fun on both of them, and I definitely recommend both of these to people who are looking to get into electric bikes, but they don't wanna spend a bunch of money. They're both good utility e-bikes that have great use for basically anybody who wants to replace a car or just wants to do some recreational e-biking. So if you wanna check these out, I'm gonna put two links in the description below. If you do purchase one of these bikes using the links below, it actually helps support this channel so I can keep making these uh, free videos. So if you do wanna get one of these bikes, I hope you'll use those links. And uh, last but not least, before we go, it's time to announce the winner of the ebook giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Leonardo Kite. So congratulations, just let me know uh, which one of my books you'd like and where to send it. You can choose from my books, DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, and Electric Motorcycles. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment in the comment section down below. You can say anything you like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't wanna wait that long to get one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.